Baiting is about as important in competitive Smash as shaving is at BYU. Just kidding, there's actually a reason to bait people in this game. That reason being how it makes opponents want to do the same option you want them to do. See, players in this game are human, so naturally we're gonna try to win. This means nobody will be handing out free openings, allowing you to combo them all willy-nilly. The only way anyone will do what you want them to do in this game is if it looks like an appealing option to them as well. Example time. So you've had a few unsuccessful approaches toward this fox and decide it's time to slow the game down a little. So, you sit by the edge of the stage and wait for him to run on in. But the fox doesn't budge. Instead, he decides to get extremely aggressive on his B button, mashing it deep into his controller's socket, spamming lasers from the other side. Joke's on him for turning his controller into mush, but in-game you found yourself in a pretty sticky situation. You have the chance to either approach this fox, which you suck at, or camp back. He doesn't seem like he's gonna stop shooting lasers anytime soon, so you inevitably decide to run up to him in the end. That, my friends, was a very simple bait. He noticed your approaches had been sucking, so he baited you to do another one with lasers. You might not have approached if he didn't shoot the lasers, because there wouldn't have been any punishment for not going in. But since that wasn't the case, you reluctantly rushed in there. When baiting people, you want your opponent to have the DK player's mindset. They need to have a genuine reason for doing what you want them to do. And that's just what this video is here to teach you. The best part is you can start using all these baits today. They don't require 20 hours in training mode or a master's degree in parrying. Just a few simple in-game decisions can get the opponent feeling super manipulated and angry at you. Why is this something we want to learn? I have no idea. Number 1. Teasing people off stage. Let's say you've just sent your opponent off stage and want to capitalize on it. There are plenty of ways to do this, such as edge guarding, ledge trapping, and, well, teasing them off stage. Okay, what is this? It's actually super simple. All you have to do is jump out near the opponent and wait for them to do something. That's it. If they air dodge, you're given the easiest opening in the world. Just hit them right after. If they jump, they'll have one less resource to recover with, and you might be able to punish them if they go low afterward. Now, if they attack, you'll want to stay just outside the range of their move, so you don't end up getting reverse edge guarded. You may even be able to get a punish in. This bait is especially good if the opponent doesn't have a jump. Many players use an early up B in this situation, since it prevents people from gimping their low recovery. So if you catch your opponent without one, you may just want to jump towards them, immediately jump back, and get a super hard punish on their early recovery. Now this bait isn't going to work all the time, as there are some pretty darn smart players in this game, but there's pretty much no risk going for it. And if it doesn't end up working out, you've lost absolutely nothing, and can try pressuring them with other things like ledge trapping. Number two, building a wall of aerials when the opponent's on a platform. So this one's kind of self-explanatory. By throwing out a bunch of aerials from center stage, you force the opponent to get hit by one of them, wait for you to stop, or get off the platform in some way besides dashing straight forward. Unfortunately, not every character can do this very effectively. But if you're playing Lucina, Roy, Inkling, or another character with quick aerials that you can use a lot of, you're gonna have a pretty good time. One way you can make this even better is by throwing out a few aerials then catching the opponent's landing right after. I found that once you land with your last aerial is when most people try to rush to ground level like PC gamers on Black Friday. So you can use this opportunity to stuff their landing, punish what they land with, punish what they do after the landing, or whatever you feel is best. By the way, the best stage to do this on is Kalos. The Kalos platforms are the worst platforms to be on in this game's rule set, since players will always be forced to either run off towards center, which gets you on stage but is risky, drop through which sometimes gets you on stage and sometimes doesn't, jump, an option that puts you way above the opponent, hashtag not fun at all, or run off stage, which is a pretty awful position to be in. So if you play a character who can do this aerial spamming, there's your stage pick pro tip. Number three, tomahawking. I've talked about tomahawks quite a lot on this channel actually, but there are a few things regarding them that I still need to mention. First, what is a tomahawk? A tomahawk, aka empty hop grab, is when you land on the opponent's shield and grab instead of doing a landing aerial. It throws people off guard since most players do land with aerials or B moves or whatever. Anyway, in order to get a landing grab, you need to bait the opponent to shield first. If they know you're just going to be tomahawking the whole match, you can get stuffed out real easily. One great way to condition a shield is by hitting the opponent, or their shield, with a rising aerial first. If they stay on the ground afterward, there's almost no way they won't shield, since they were just hit by a move a second ago. There are many other situations where tomahawking is a great option, such as if the opponent just whips something as you were in the air, like duh, they're gonna expect an aerial. Or if you haven't been landing with any tomahawks for a large portion of the match. Remember, always bait the shield first, then land with a grab. Number 4, Deceptively Spacing. Notice how I said deceptive spacing instead of distant spacing. Sure, good spacing at a distance is important, and it certainly has its place in this game competitively. The only reason I'm not including it here is because it doesn't really count as a direct bait. Let's be real here. How many people are going to shield grab a Marth forward air from this distance? Not a lot, it's obviously not grabbable. The fair is good for different reasons besides shield grab baiting like shield damage and pressure. But if you make your spacing seem unsafe when it's actually not, that's when you can seriously bamboozle your opponent.
opponent. Yoshi, for example, can land with neutral air in a spot that looks super unsafe, then use his great air mobility to drift behind the opponent and avoid a shield grab. If the opponent takes the bait, he can follow up with a forward tilt into a combo. Many other characters have moves that can do the same general thing. Zero Suit's Nair looks shield grabbable at point blank, but it's actually not. Ness's Magnet can make him not come all the way down when he looks like he's about to. Even just landing with spot dodge can beat shield grab if the opponent's not too fast. Try experimenting with your own character to find which moves look easy to shield grab on the surface, but are actually quite safe. Pretty sure Wolf and Roy can do the same kind of drifty thing as Yoshi, BT dubs. Number 5. Jumping above and through a platform. This is very simple but effective. How many of you have been in the super lame situation where the opponent's shielding on a platform and you just can't hit them? If you've ever played Smash, I'm sure it's happened. One way to fix this might be to go onto the platform yourself and try to call something out like a roller jump, but you'd have to do some guessing in that scenario, which isn't exactly optimal. A great alternative to going on the platform is making it look like you're about to land on it, but then falling through right afterwards. This might get the opponent to panic and do a defensive option since this bait is so uncommon. So if they spot dodge, roll, or maybe even jump, you can react and punish without risk. Watching Mr. R do this to Zero several times at MK Leo Saga is pretty much what inspired this whole tip, so make sure you at least give it a try. Number 6. Beating everything but grab. People in general are more scared of grabbing in Ultimate than any other Smash game. It kind of sucks how characters like Marth and Banjo have grab ranges the size of microbacteria. But what can you do? Might as well use this mechanic to your advantage. One way to do this is by doing something safe on the opponent's shield, then shielding yourself. If your spacing is good enough, you should be able to beat anything the opponent does besides grab, including narrative shield, up B out of shield, or any other move. As long as the move they use is punishable and your reactions are decent, this can work wonders. But what if they do start grabbing? Well, thankfully, all grabs are super punishable in Ultimate, so if you've gotten grabbed one time and are expecting another one, just bait it out and body them for it. Maybe put up the shield for a half second to make a grab look super appealing, then jump or spot dodge to beat it out. You can get pretty creative. Number 7. Rolling towards the ledge. If there's one true combo I hate getting hit by more than anything, it's roll to back throw. Whenever an opponent does this to me, I question why I play this game and if I've even made any progress in all my years playing it. I don't think I'm alone in this opinion though. Everyone wants to avoid it. If you watch Dark Wizzy right here, you see him go for a roll towards the edge to set up for the cool true combo. MBD, like what many other players would do, got a little scared here and rolled inward. But it was a bait, as Dark Wizzy expected this panic option and punished with a run up up smash. If you play a character like Mario, Ness, or anyone who'd be likely to grab after a roll backward, this bait can definitely come in handy. You can also punish jump or spot dodge, but I'd say roll is the most likely to happen. I should note that you don't want to do this too often. Many players will catch on eventually and start punishing your roll, so I suggest using it as a mix-up instead of a go-to kill strategy. Still, it can be pretty useful and especially tilting when used right. Number 8. Using safe attacks near the ledge. Get up attack is the only ledge option that's not at least slightly hard to punish, so if you successfully bait an opponent to do it, that's huge. One way to condition the opponent to get up attack is by using safe moves that can hit the opponent if they're hanging on the ledge. Now, the goal isn't actually to hit them, I mean, they'll probably be invincible anyway, but it's to make get up attack look like the answer to all their problems. It's scary to be threatened with moves that could potentially hit you in a matter of frames, but a lot of people think that the best way to deal with people using moves at the ledge is by get up attacking. Use this to your advantage by baiting it out and shielding when the time seems right. One thing I like to do is attack the ledge with fair, then make it look like I'm about to go for a second fair, but shield instead. If they get up attack to try and stuff out my giant nose, I'll be in the best position ever to punish. And obviously, you should only be doing this with safe attacks. Charging a Ryu down smash will bait a get up attack, but you'll get hit by it, which isn't exactly the best ending. Number 9. Waiting to punish punishable options. Alright, so the opponent's been air dodging out of your down throw the whole match. It's just a minor habit, and he's clearly not a bad player, but you haven't punished it yet. All of a sudden, you're in a last hit situation and you get the grab. By now, the opponent's been conditioned to believe that air dodge is a safe option that you're not willing to punish, so he does it with no fear. But you were ready for it, and you kill him with a down air. That was Mario waiting for the perfect moment to punish a punishable option. Oh, and it doesn't have to be the opponent air dodging out of a down throw. It could also be something like them jumping in the corner or teching in place. Either way, sometimes it'll be super obvious that the opponent has a habit of doing the same option repeatedly, but you might want to save the punish for when it matters most. Punishing the air dodge mid-match will get you good damage, but during high pressure scenarios, it'll take some extra brain power to know what they're gonna do instead. I recommend staying on the down low and letting the opponent get away with it a few times to give them a false sense of security. And number 10, using head bops. Feel like your baits just aren't working 
working well enough, this may be because you're not head bopping. Say you're lying on the ground and the opponent's committed to reacting to what you do to get up. Simply do a head bop, move your body, do what you need to do IRL to get them to think your character is doing something when they actually aren't. You can use head bops in a wide range of situations. Heck, you can even combine it with some of the tips from earlier in this video. Tease the opponent off stage, do a head bop, and punish their air dodge because they thought you were gonna do a move. Now, maybe this is super strange advice and maybe head bopping alone isn't gonna win you any tournaments. Nevertheless, the option is there. And those are 10 baits that can all grant you success one way or another. I should know that I can't guarantee all of these will work on every single person, as some really amazing players are able to detect these kinds of bluffs. But there's no way you're gonna see even the smallest bit of success unless you try these. So go out there and add these baits to your arsenal. Be sure to let me know how they work out. I'd love to hear your experiences. As always, thanks so much for watching. Let's go banana boy. Goodbye. I'm gonna go practice my head bops now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Mario, oh yeah, Mario number one. Here we go. I'm gonna get you, I got you. I'm gonna get you, I got you. Bye bye, Yahoo!